let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name for your goodness, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us today, ministering to us, ministering to our children. We are grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. If you want to follow along, go to rmfchurch.org, click on media, then notes. And uh, today's title is The Inner Voice. The Inner Voice. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Uh, for the next few weeks, I don't know how long, but I'm going to be talking on the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, uh, I'm excited about that. And uh, the, I think most people believe in the Trinity, that God is three persons in one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give a few scriptures just in case some people are a little fuzzy on that and uh, trying to explain the Trinity. I know there's been some uh, illustrations to try to explain the Trinity. <clears throat> like, uh, you know, he's like an egg. There's a shell, there's a yolk, and there's a white part. And Well, the only problem with that is God is everything at the same time, all the time even though they're separate. So you can't, an egg really doesn't give a good illustration of that. You say, well, how, how can you explain? I can't. And to be honest with you, I don't know if anybody can. Explain the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And yet they're all, there's three, but they're yet they're one. Matter of fact, even God himself said that God was in Christ reconciling or making things right with the world during the crucifixion. God was in Jesus and the Holy Ghost was there. So you think, well, how do we explain this? I accept it by faith. I just accept it by faith, but by faith and, and by faith. Genesis 1.1 says this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void darkness over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Spirit. And those are interchangeable, by the way. I know some people, you know, you shouldn't say Holy Spirit. It's Holy Ghost. Really? Really? You want to you wanna go there? But anyway, in the beginning, God. If you look that word up in Hebrew, God is Elohim. And Elohim is a plural word. Elohim is a plural word, which brings in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so in Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our image. Let us. Who's the us? Well, it wasn't the angels because they were never involved in the uh, creation. It was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Let us make man. So again, it's talking about the Trinity. But uh, I just want to give you a couple of scriptures here to kind of differentiate because uh, just so you know in your heart that we do have a Father God, we do have Jesus the Son, and we do have the Holy Spirit. 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God, there you go, one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And so he, right there in the scripture, he goes, say what? Well, there's only one God. But there's a mediator between man and God, and it's Jesus. Ephesians 1.3, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus. There you go, Father and Jesus. All because he sees us wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate him with all our hearts. And one of the great statements in Deuteronomy chapter 6 that it says that the Lord our God is one Lord, is one God. And so throughout the Bible, it, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but it, it very well all through the Bible says we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So each member of the God has, has a, uh, an equal value but unique roles. Uh, the Holy Spirit's role is to point us to Jesus so we can see God, 
who he truly is. As a father who loves us. As Melody said, we're going to change the way people think about God. And the Holy Spirit helps us to do that. To make people think differently about God. A father who loves us. Who has given everything that we might know him. And who desires that we experience his goodness. He, he wants us to experience his goodness. So the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, is the spirit of truth. He is our helper, our counselor, our guide. He teaches us who we are and helps us fulfill God's plans for our lives. That's the Holy Ghost. You know, sometimes, you know, you'll hear me saying, well, Jesus is on the inside of us. Well, you say, well, the Bible says that it's the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. You're not wrong if you say God the Father is on the inside of us. Why? Because they are one and one and the same. So it doesn't matter. You know, people say, well, it doesn't say that. Well, I'm just telling you that God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost are one. So if I say one, it's the same as saying the other. Does that make sense? Because the Bible does that. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened up. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Well, there you, in this picture you have all three. You have Jesus getting baptized. The heavens opened up. The Father God speaks. The voice coming out of heaven. And the Spirit of God descends upon him like a dove. So you have all three. It's a picture of all three right there. Right there. And you say, well, how can they be three separate but yet be one? Again, I can't explain that. I cannot explain that. But I just take it for what the Bible says. There is God the Father. There is God the Son. There is God the Holy Spirit. And the three are one. Acts 5, 3. Acts 5, 3. God revealed their secret to Peter. So he said to him, Ananias, why did you let Satan fill your heart and make you think you could lie to the Holy Spirit? You only pretended to give it all, yet you hid back part of the proceeds from the sale of your property to keep for yourselves before you sold it. Wasn't it yours to sell or to keep? And after you sold it, wasn't the money entirely at your disposal? How could you plot such a thing in your heart? You haven't lied to people, but you've lied to God. Well, he said it was the Holy Spirit, but then he turns around and said it was God. So this is proof also that the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit will teach us, and he reminds us, John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance all things that I said to you. Now, here's where we start to get to things that we need to grab hold of. The Holy Ghost wants to help you in everyday life. You say, well, are you just teaching a theology lesson this morning? No. Yes, but no. I want us to realize the power of the Holy Ghost that dwells inside of you, that he's not there just to help you on Sunday morning. He's there to help you in your relationships. He's he's there to help you in your everyday life when you get frustrated by that person that you call a jerk at work. Okay, maybe that wasn't good. But for people you have trouble with working, all right? You all look so holy, I thought, well, maybe nobody thinks like that. But anyway, I, by people you struggle with at work, the Holy Ghost can help you get through that and not just get through it, but to have joy in the midst of it. You go, say what? Yes! That is not only possible, it's what the will of God is for you. He doesn't want somebody to be able to take joy from you and ruin your day just because something may be dumb that they said. The Holy Ghost wants to help you. He wants to help you in your job. He wants to help you in your marriage. He wants to help you in your life. He wants to help you with your emotions. The way that you think in every part of life, the Holy Ghost is there to help you in every situation of life. But we just need to realize that. If you don't know what you have, how can you benefit from it? How can you benefit from it? And so this series, or what I'm going to be talking about, I hope will stir you up and to help you that instead of just trying to get through on your own, I got to figure this out. I got to figure this out. 
for years, I do this, and you may think this is a little strange, but I do this all the time. If I can't find something, not that I'm losing stuff all the time. <laughs> my wife is up here. If my wife's around, I usually just ask her, where is it? 90% of the time, she knows. But then there's that small 10% that I say, okay, Holy Ghost, help me find this. Help me. I, it, I don't like wasting time by looking for stuff. You know, I read these statistics. It's like you spend, I think it was like a year out of your lifetime looking for keys. <laughs> that, that is such a horrible thing. So you know what my wife did? She put a key uh, peg or whatever you call it, ring, right by the door. So when I come in, it's automatic. I walk through the door and put my keys right on that. Guess what? I know where my keys are. Unless I come to the church. <laughs> but anyway, maybe we should put a... No, that wouldn't work. But anyway, the Holy Ghost has helped me so many times to find things. And every time that when I find it, you know what's the first words out of my mouth? Thank you, Holy Ghost, for doing that. Yeah. Why? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. So I acknowledge Him. I acknowledge him for helping me find stuff. I, help, I, I acknowledge him for helping me figure things out. I, I acknowledge him when I'm doing the, you know, the quarterly taxes for the church. Oh, dear Lord, I acknowledge him. <laughs> acknowledge God. He will help you with your taxes. He will help you in every part of your life. And he's not just a Sunday God. He's in you to help you in every area of your life. Amen. So we need him. And I know there's been people, you know, some people, some of the weirdest people <laughs> are at Bible school. I'm going to be nice. But I just remember when I was in Bible school, I just thought, I'm just a simple guy from Kentucky. Man, I ran into some people that were just weird with a capital W. They were just weird. And uh, I just thought, man, I'm just here to learn about God. And they were just doing weird things, you know, and it's the Holy Ghost and everything. I just go, huh, whatever, and then run. But uh, if I asked you this, if you could have a choice to have Jesus here on this earth, or the Holy Spirit, which would you rather have? A lot of people would say Jesus because, you know, he was there to... I mean, it would have been neat to have been one of the disciples. Right there when he opened the blinded eyes, caused the deaf to hear, caused the cripple, the, man, the lame to walk, and raised the dead. Ooh, wouldn't it wouldn't have been nice to have been part of the funeral of Lazarus. Man, wouldn't that have been nice? We're here at this funeral. You know, funerals are really hard and everything. But all of a sudden, Lazarus comes bouncing out of the tomb. Would that have been so neat? You would have said, man, yes. Man, it would have been neat to follow Jesus. I would like to have Jesus right here, right now. I think a lot of Christians would say, oh, to be back in the day of Jesus. Oh, to be back in the day. Well, John 16, verse 5 and 7. Listen to these scriptures. This is Jesus speaking. He says this, but now I'm going to go away to him who sent me. In other words, he's going back to the Father. And none of you ask me, where are you going? Verse 6. But because I said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Now, Jesus says, I'm going to leave. So naturally, the disciples go, major depression. Major depression coming on right now. Verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Now, listen. How many think that Jesus was always telling the truth? I mean, he was always telling the truth. But he had to say, listen to me now. I'm telling you something that's true. Why in the world would Jesus have to say this? Because what he's about ready to say, the disciples are going to go, wait, what? What? He says, I'm going to tell you something that is very true. That I go away. For if I do not go away, if I don't, the helper will not come to you. But if I do depart, if I go away, I will send him to you. Who's the him? The Holy Spirit. Jesus said, it's to your advantage 
that I leave. Wow. Wow. Can you imagine the disciples going tilt on this? It's to your advantage that I leave. Guess what? It's to our advantage that he left. Are you hearing me? Because if it was just Jesus, when he was in Jerusalem, he was only in Jerusalem. When he was in Galilee, he was only in Galilee. But guess what? The Holy Spirit is in every square inch of this planet. Every square inch. Afghanistan, Iraq. He's there. <laughs> oh, that's good news. Oh, that's good news. He's there to help every believer. He's there to help every heathen. He's there to help even people, the Taliban, to get their eyes turned around onto God. He's helping everybody. Now, people have choices. But he's there to help. He's there to change. He's there to transform every single person on this planet. And he's there with you every day, 24-7. That's the Holy Spirit. Every day. He says, it's better. It's to your advantage that I go away. And then he says, I will send him. Him. You say him, that's like a person. He is a person. How can it be a person and be in all of us? I don't know. I don't know. But he is. He's a person. But he's God. And he's in, in all of us. How can that be? I don't know. But I'm thankful it is. Because I get to talk to him. When I'm frustrated, I get to talk to him. When I'm ticked off, I get to talk to him. When I'm even mad at Mike, I get to talk to him. And guess what? He talks to me. And he's talking to you. He is. Jesus said, it's better for you that I go away. He is our helper. That word helper in John 16 there, it's in the Greek, it's paraclete. Not a parakeet. A paraclete. We had parakeets when I was growing up. That's another story. Anyway, paraclete. They all died. Uh, people think that the, <laughs> they were. They were just sickly all the time and they died. They were terrible. But people think that, uh, I digress. People think that uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, it, it, he's there to com just make you feel miserable. And if you mess up, he's just going to make you feel miserable all the time. And so they, they don't really think to have a great relationship with the Holy Spirit. It can be that is so far from the truth. In other words, we need to rethink God. We need to rethink the Holy Spirit. He's not there just to make you feel bad. And every time you do wrong, you sinner, you, you did this. Because that's not what the Bible teaches. That word paraclete means encourager. First of all, it means comforter and help, helper, obviously. Encourager. One who pleads another's cause before a judge. A pleader. A counsel for defense. A legal assistant, an advocate, one who pleads another's cause with one, an intercessor, an assistant, to lead us to a deeper knowledge of the gospel truth and give us divine strength needed to enable us to undergo trials and persecutions on behalf of the divine kingdom. It's, uh, that word paraclete is driven from a Latin word for fortress. The term comforter was chosen by the first translators because it refers to a person who is brave, strong, courageous, like a warrior who meets challenges with a strength that defies all odds. It speaks of someone who is a lion-hearted or tough, a force that dominates and subdues. That's what the Holy Ghost is inside of you. In the Old Testament, even in the Old Testament, you know, when they were building the tabernacle, uh, God told Moses that he was going to fill men with the Spirit of God to work and to build the temple. So these people were uh, working with bronze and gold and stones. And the Bible says that the Spirit of God came upon them so they could do excellent work. You know, so many times we just get ooky spooky spiritual about the Holy Ghost. Oh, he's going to help me, you know, and do this and do everything. He'll help you do your job right. 
And if there's ever been a time on this planet we need, first of all, we need people doing a job. And then secondly, we need them doing it right. Doing it right. God is a God of excellence. Not perfection, but he is a God of excellence. And he likes to do things right. If you don't think that, look at the stars and everything. They can predict where the stars are going to be a thousand years from now. Why is that? Because the excellence of God, everything is planned and orchestrated like a mighty symphony in the heavens. Well, God can help you do your job right. He can help you get a promotion in your job. He can help you get a better job. You know, let me just (laughs) go off. You know, if you hate your job, hmm. I know people that work at their job for 20, 30, 40 years, and they hate it. You know, that's your choice. God's not going to send an angel down and go, Hey, why don't you look for something else? But I'm telling you, why don't you look for something else? Something that you enjoy doing. Why in the world would our Heavenly Father want you to work at a job for 40 years just so you can get a good retirement? Well, it pays good. Really? How about getting a good job that pays good and you enjoy? That's the type of Father that you and I have. And it's available. And the Holy Ghost, you know, there's a scripture that I, it's not really a scripture, it's a concept. In John 16, it says this, that when I leave... God says, the Holy Ghost, I'm going to send him. And he'll lead you and guide you into all truth and even show you things to come. I say that probably more than any passage of Scripture in my life. I said it on the way to work this morning. Or on the way to work. I did work. I am working. But anyway, uh, I say this. The Holy Ghost leads me and guides me in all truth and shows me things to come. I say that all the time. Holy Ghost leads me and guides me in all truth and shows me things to come. So what does that mean? The Holy Ghost is leading me, and he's guiding me, and he shows me things to come. Even when I don't understand it or see it, I believe God is leading me and guiding me. You need to believe that. The Lord taught me that when I was 16, 17 years old. I've said this illustration, but it's a good one. My brother-in-law and sister, they were going through a hard, hard time financially. And... um, they weren't, I didn't know it, you know, 16, 17 year old, you don't really pay attention to stuff like that, but they weren't able to pay their bills and everything. They had kids. And, and so one Sunday after church, a bunch of people went over to their house for lunch. <laughs> and uh, so my sister told her husband, my brother in law, you know, Johnny, here's the list. You need to go to the store and get this. And I heard her tell him that he ran upstairs you know and he came back about 10 minutes or whatever and he says hey Mike go with me to the store so I went with him to the store he gets all this stuff fills up the grocery cart and he's at the checkout and uh, the lady says oh to be such and such you know and, and I just pushed my brother-in-law off and I said hey I'll, I'll pay this I didn't hear Mike speaketh Lord for thy servant is listening. I didn't hear any of that. I didn't hear nothing. I didn't sense nothing. I didn't get goosebumps. I didn't get, whoo, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. No, I didn't know. I just thought, hey, I want to pay for it. I didn't think that he's out of, you know, didn't have the money. I didn't think any of that. I just said, hey, I want to pay for it. So I paid for it. We got in the car. My brother-in-law didn't start The vehicle, he just looked over him and he said, you were led by God. And I went, say what? What? Went? What? What are you talking about? He said, I went there and he opened up his billfold and a moth flew out. (laughs) True story. True story. A moth flew out. There was nothing in there. I don't, a moth that had a home inside his wallet because there's no money been in there for quite some time. Zero money. And I looked at him, I kind of chuckled. I said, (laughs) how are you going to pay for it? He goes, I don't know. I just prayed and told God before I came. I said, God, we have these guests. I want to provide for them and eat, you know, so they would have food to eat. So you're going to have to make a way because I don't have the money. And he said, I felt the peace. 
So this is how he worked it out. I said, well, what do you know? Everybody say, that's my God. He wants to do that in everyday life. He will meet needs through you, and you may never know. That one I knew. But I know that happens. I know that happens. In Acts 10, 38, it says how God anointed Jesus and Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed with the devil, for God was with him. He was anointed by the Holy Ghost. Jesus was even anointed by the Holy Ghost while he was on this planet. He said, the works that I do, I don't do them. But it's the Father who works through me. And what was he using? The Holy Ghost to do them. That same Holy Ghost that used Jesus to do those tremendous things is the same Holy Ghost inside of you and me. So what does that mean? Jesus said, the works that I do, can you do also? What? No, I can't. I'm just a I'm just a guy. I'm just a kid. I'm just a girl. I'm just a housewife. I'm just, I'm just. That's what you believe. That's what you'll be. But if you rethink that and start believing in your heart that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. The same spirit. The same spirit. Colossians 3.15. Let your heart be always guided by the peace of the anointed one. Who called you to peace as part of this one body. And always be thankful. Let the word of Christ live in you richly. Flooding you with all wisdom. Applying the scriptures as you teach. And instruct one another with the psalms. With festive praise. With prophetic songs given to you spontaneously by the spirit. So sing to God with all of your hearts. Let me get to this real quick. A couple of weeks ago. A few weeks ago. I was in prayer, and I just said, Lord, I just want to hear more often from you. I just feel like I need to hear more, you more often. You ever thought that? The Bible says this, my sheep hear my voice. Jesus said that. I said, I just want to hear from you more often. And this is what I got in my heart. He says, I speak to you every day. He says, I speak to my people every day. That would include you. I speak to them every day. And I go, I'm missing it then. He says, yes, you are. And this is why. Your heart. You remember the teaching of the heart? If you missed the teaching of the heart last month, you need to hear that. But this is the teaching of the heart. The spirit of God and you are one in your spirit. And they are speaking all the time. Your heart is where it bottlenecks. What you believe in the heart is what's going to determine what you hear from your spiritual man or from God. Listen to me now. This is good. This is so good. God speaks to us according to what you know through the word, which is truth. Listen to me. Now, there's some things that we know and believe that are truth that really aren't truth. For example, for years of my life, I thought it was the Lord who wanted me to be sick, wanted me to be poor, because so I wouldn't be lifted up in pride. I believed that in my heart, and I bought, thought that was truth from the Word of God. The problem with that is the Spirit of God speaking out of my spirit came to my heart. That voice came to my heart, and I believe that the Lord did not want me healed. So therefore, I did not hear, heal, hear that by the stripes of Jesus, I am whole. I didn't hear that. But it was speaking to me every single day of my life. This is good. Now listen to me. Every truth that you know that is real truth from the word of God, that is going to be speaking to you through your heart or to your heart. And it's up to your heart whether you believe that or not, whether you hear that. But every day of your life, the Bible says that you're the righteousness of God. Every day, God is speaking to you and me that says, you are righteous, Mike. Every single day, God is speaking. You're the head and not the tail. 
Every single day, God says, you are healed, Mike. Every single day, he says, you're prosperous, Mike. You're the head, not the tail. Whatever you set your hand to shall surely prosper. I've made you wealthy. I've given you the ability to create wealth. I say that every day, Mike. It's up to your heart to be open that you're hearing that. Every single day, the goodness of God is speaking to you and to me. It's up to your heart to be turned on and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Is that awesome or what? There's people who don't hear that. There's people who have gotten offended. Well, I've preached about healing or whatever. They get up and huff out, you know. And, and I feel sorry for them. Because you know what I know? I know in their heart, they believe that it's not the will of God for them to be healed. They believe that in their heart. And they think that is truth. And guess what? Their spiritual man and God on the inside of them is speaking. You're the healed of the Lord. But their heart goes, no, I don't believe that. So their physical body and their emotions and their soul is not hearing that because of what they believe. I just struggle with finances. I just struggle all the time with money. I just struggle all the time with that. Your spiritual man is saying, you're blessed. You're prosperous. You're not just blessed. You have an abundance inside of you. But if your heart goes, mm, no, just, I just don't believe that. I just believe this. You're not going to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. But he's speaking that to you. You don't think it's important to know the truth? The truth will set you free. But it's the truth that is the truth. It's not the truth that maybe you've been taught or what you've grabbed a hold on as. <laughs> this is so good. Hallelujah. Oh, I wanted to get into this, you know. I'm eight minutes over. I'll pick up next time. But listen to me. God is speaking to you and me today. When you wake up tomorrow, God is speaking to you. So start tuning yourself up to what God is saying. He's saying you're righteous. He's saying you're accepted. He's saying your future is bright. You know, you think, oh, dear Lord, you know, I'm watching the news and I'm doing this. And oh, my job, it may be gone. And all of this. Oh, man, oh, we're, we're just all going to hell in a handbasket. Oh, jeez. And then we get real spiritual. Jesus, help us all. What? <laughs> no, what you need to hear is my future is bright and it's not dependent upon the United States government. Boo. My future is bright and it's not dependent upon my employer. My future is bright because it's dependent upon my belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I trust him. I acknowledge him. And I'm not leaning to my own understanding. I'm trusting him. So I have a bright future. Amen. That's what the Spirit of God is saying to you. And that's up to you and me whether you're listening to that and hearing it. Every day he's speaking that. Every day he's saying that you're healed. Every day he's saying you're righteous. Every day he's saying that you're my beloved and who I am. Well pleased. You are my beloved in who I'm well pleased. Every single day he's speaking that. But we think that oh, I'm just a sinner on a popsicle stick. I'm just unworthy. I'm just all that. So guess what? You're not going to hear that. You won't hear that. I'm going to hear that. How about you? I said I'm going to hear that. How about you? Let's all stand. Praise God. For the Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever. This message has set you free. This is the gospel, the good news. This is what God wants us to hear. And guess what? The Holy Ghost, that inner voice, that inner voice is speaking today. That inner voice is speaking you, to you today. If you're having, having marital issues, that inner voice is speaking to you today. Don't give up. Don't quit. I'll help you. I'll help you. That inner voice is speaking to you today. Oh, I don't know about my job. I just, I wish I knew what to do. Don't wish anymore. Don't wish anymore. I just wish I would make the right decisions. You just start confessing. 
Holy Ghost leads me and guides me in all truth. He's leading me and guiding me in all truth. He's showing me what to do. My steps are ordered by God. My steps are ordered by God. Every step I take, I take in faith knowing that God is leading me and guiding me. I'm led by the Spirit of God. You start talking like that. I'm telling you, opportunity will fall in your lap. Opportunity will fall in your lap. Hello, Mr. Davis. We have this opportunity for you. Yeah, I was expecting it. I was expecting this. Instead, most people go, oh, I, just got, I can't believe it. Yeah, there's a reason you're responding like that. <laughs> but the Spirit of God wants you to know, I have made you the head and not the tail. I made you above, not beneath. I've created you in my very image. The image of God. That's what, how you're created. Let me pray for you. Father, we just pray in Jesus' name. For every single person. We're changing the way we think. And we're tuning up our ears. He that hath an ear, let him hear, Jesus said. There's people who have ears and they have not been hearing. And I thank you, God, we're clearing out the wax and we have ears to hear today. The Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost is speaking to us and we are people that hear. And we hear rightly. We hear correctly. We hear the truth. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.